First of all, let me greet you and thank you for coming to this session this early in the morning. I would like to present my work, which is dedicated to the preservation of cultural heritage in endangered territories. And one of these territories is now Nagorno-Karabakh region, or uh, the unrecognized Republic of Artsakh. First of all, I would like to give some, uh, let's say, background background information about our project, why we decided to do it. So on the map, you can see the map of the Republic of Armenia, the red one, and the blue one is the unrecognized Republic of Artsakh. But unfortunately, now 80% of its territory is under the control of Azerbaijan and Russian troops. So, uh, in this map, you can see the historical Armenia, the territory of historical Armenia, or Armenian highland, which has been inhabited by ethnical Armenians since immemorial time. And this territory is abundant of a huge number of uh, cultural heritage sites, monuments, cross stones, graveyards, so forth. But the present-day Republic of Armenia, as you can see, covers only the 10% of its historical territory. And most of its cultural heritage now is in um, Turkey, Iran, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. And um, unfortunately, uh, in the past decades, the neighbors of Armenia have shown different approaches to the issue of the preservation of this historical heritage within their territories. Um, I don't know, the position of tolerance towards Armenians in the Republic of Azerbaijan continues uh, till a present moment. Um, and um, uh, during the war in these territories, uh, which started in 1990s and um, till now, there are conflict, armed conflict there. There have been huge damage to this cultural heritage. I'll just show some of them. Here you can see the Church of St. Jacob. And um, the first picture was taken in 1910, and the second one was taken in 2005, and you can see that the church doesn't exist anymore. Here you can see the church stripped of its inscriptions uh, we, um, which was done during its repaired, carried out in the early 21st century. And here we see um, a huge uh, graveyard, Armenian graveyard, a cemetery, which contains uh, memorials from the 5th century till the uh, late 19th century, and it was demolished completely. <laughs> According to the European Parliament resolution on the destruction of cultural heritage in this region, um, you can see how many churches uh, and memorials were demolished in that territory. On the 3rd February 2022, the Ministry of Culture of Azerbaijan announced the establishment of a working group responsible for the removing the fictitious traces written by Armenians on Albanian religious temples. And so this means that thousands of Armenian inscriptions on the monuments of Artsakh, it is the toponymy used by the Armenians for this region, should be erased. And as we know, inscriptions are one of the most important and primary evidences of belonging to these um, heritage. So we launched a project and the primary goal of this project is to preserve and protect the rich cultural heritage of Armenian inscriptions which are invaluable historical artifacts. These inscriptions encompass a wide range of mediums including stone, metal, parchment and ceramics and are scattered across different regions and periods. By employing digital humanities approach, the project aims to leverage technology to document, digitize and make these inscriptions accessible to a wider audience.
The approach allows for the systematic organization, preservation, and dissemination of the inscriptions, ensuring the long-term survival and fostering greater engagement with Armenian cultural heritage. Uh, during this project, we have been collaborating with the uh, State Service of the Protection of the Historical Environment of the Republic of the uh, Artsakh, and they played a crucial role for this project. They shared their expertise knowledge of this region's historical site and architectural heritage. Uh, these interactions facilitated the interpretation and contextualization of the inscriptions within their broader historical, cultural, and religious context. We also collaborated with the Armenian Apostolic Church because we recognize the importance of this church in this region, the presence of this church in this region, and it deep tied to the culture and religious aspects of Armenian inscriptions. While recognizing the importance of engaging the local Armenian community in the preservation and appreciation of their cultural heritage, the, uh, the project initiate, initially focused on involving selected individuals within the community. Due to various constraints, such as geographical isolation and re limited resources, Engaging the entire community proved challenging. How the involvement of these individuals was seen as a crucial starting point to generate awareness and initiate a ripple effect within the wider community. And these selected members played uh, pivotal roles of cultural ambassadors within their uh, community. Now about the project itself. Uh, we, um, uh, during this project, uh, we undertook a rigorous and systematic approach to digitize and preserve Armenian inscriptions in this region. This involved developing a comprehensive framework for collection, organization, and digitization, ensuring long-term accessibility and preservation. Each inscription was documented with careful attention, giving to its transcription, translation and location details. To maintain uh, consistency and standardization, the project established guidelines to record ess essential information for each inscription. This encompassed diplomatic and interpretive transcriptions, English translations, geographic and chronological data, inscription types, historical background, bibli bibliographic reference, and photographic evidence. In the case of geographic and chronological data, uh, we should differentiate, of course, between place of origin, find spot, and the last seen uh, place, or the place where the inscription um, is removed. But later, I'll come to this. Through the efforts and collaboration with our partners, local partners, the project successfully collected and digitized over 200 inscriptions from this region. Um, and the, this encompassed a diverse range of inscription types, including memorials, burials, constructions, donations, legal records, and mixed categories. The data set captured vital aspects such as language data, accurate transcriptions, translations, precise location details, and historical context associated with the inscriptions. For the completion of the database of Armenian inscriptions, we utilize the Oxygen text editor. This text editor provides to be highly suitable for our needs to, uh, due to its robust features and support for XML-based encode, encoding, making it ideal for working with the APIDOC schema or APIDOC guidelines, which are the accepted standard for digitizing epigraphic heritage. By employing the Epidoc schema, we can achieve a standardized and well-structured digital database of Armenian inscriptions. This adherence to established guidelines ensures the longevity, accessibility, and interoperability of our data. Um, however, there were some restrictions or problems or challenges we faced because the Epidoc guidelines had to be adapted a little bit uh, to be suitable for digitizing Armenian inscriptions. For example, we faced a problem with um, 
punctuation. Um, uh, for example, um, uh, the two uh, vertical dots. In uh, Armenian language, it stands for a full stop. But also in inscriptions, it stands before important uh, words or letters which are used in Armenian to indicate a date. So we have to adapt a little bit these guidelines to differentiate between the full stop as a punctuation mark and between the indicator of a date, for example. The second challenge was um, connected with the hierarchy or representing the inscription, of the building where it was found, for example, and the monumental complex where that particular building is located. For example, in this case, this is just a schematic example, Dadivank Monastery Complex is consists of several churches and several buildings. Now we have to indicate, and I just mentioned to that according to the guideline, every inscription should be a separate file. So in this file, we have uh, to represent the hierarchy of the inscription, which is located on a particular wall. That wall belongs to a particular church, and that church is included in a particular monumental complex. Uh, that is why we have to think of a way to encode this hierarchy to represent its location um, uh, consistent, consistently. Uh, then, in the context of Armenian uh, digital epigraphic collection, the absence of standardized vocabularies poses a challenges as well. Just I want to mention that it is, uh, this project is the first attempt to compile a digital collection of Armenian epigraphy. This has never been done, that is why we have faced a lot of problems. And one of them was the lack of standardized vocabulary. To address this issue during the compilation of our database, uh, we have developed several term lists or internal authority lists that have been transformed into XML files and serve as internal references for our database. Uh, we have so far um, worked with uh, monument or object types, inscription types, material, and letter types. Um, later, we will develop the execution technique, decoration, symbols, which, but the number of decorations and symbols are huge, so it will take um, a lot of time, uh, human resources, and efforts. But I suppose within this project, we will not manage to do that. Beside that, we will have to develop. Uh, but I suppose this will be done by the historians, uh, authority list of personal names and place names. Uh, now, according to Epidoc schema, geographical data can be transcribed and encoded using various methods to capture different aspects of these data. The origin tag denotes the original location of the monument, while the provenance type found tag indicates the place of discovery. Additionally, the provenance type's observed tag can provide additional information, such as whether the monument of Artipec has been relocated or whether it is currently missing um, or not. So in our case, uh, we have used um, origin place and used um, GeoNames portal, uh, portal uh, for handling geographical data. Uh, but I want to say that in, in the case of our database, it is in essential to encode information about where, when, and by whom the inscription was observed the last time, as these are endangered inscriptions and they are being demolished, erased, so we need that information. It is, um, uh, this can be encoded, provenance, type observed, and resp the name of the person who observed and the date when it was last observed. Lemmatizing Armenian inscriptions in our database is important as it improves search, uh, is, uh, improves the searchability, analysis, cross-referencing, and multilingual assistance. Although internal lists can be helpful for domain-specific terms or project-specific needs, uh, external references for lemmatization provide higher accuracy. 
And for our project, we have used the Grappar Armenian Dictionary, online dictionary. Grappar, it is the um, ancient Armenian spoken uh, and used for writing during uh, the early middle, in, uh, middle Ages and till the beginning of the 18th century. The Grabar Armenian Dictionary, why we used it? Because uh, this uh, specific uh, online dictionary uh, was compiled by the specialist of Grabar Armenian, and it is the accessible and accepted resource uh, for the language, historians, archaeologists, and anyone interested in um, historical uh, linguistics. Um, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have faced several challenges, like the standardized vocabularies. Our aim uh, is to create a widely accepted, simple knowledge organization system for Armenian inscriptions by using uh, the term list we are working on now. This co uh, process uh, comprises multiple sta um, stages. Uh, the first of them being identifying Armenian terms and concepts. Then we will have to provide definitions in Armenians for each uh, concept. And we have to su uh, supply examples uh, from our database of each term. And uh, we have also to identify synonyms of these terms and we have to use quantitative methods of analysis to figure out which uh, term in the synonymous set should be used as a preferred label to define that particular concept. But we have faced a lot of challenges in this case uh, because um, we came across um, a problem of using uh, different terms to identify the same phenomena and just vice versa. For example, in Armenian um, published editions and articles, uh, we come across terms Gapgir, Gapagir, Katsagir, Paggir, Pagagir, Tzatzkagir, Gachnagir. According to their definitions, they are different terms. But very usually, three of these terms, Gapgir, Katsagir, Paggir, are translated as ligature. But in other cases, Pagir is translated as monogram and it represented as a monogram. In other cases, Pagir and Gahnagir are presented as cryptogram. So we have, first of all, to figure out which terms are used in which cases and then figure out how to translate them um, into English. Um, and uh, the primary, uh, as I said, the primary challenge was to identify the Armenian terms. And uh, after that, we have to work uh, with um, this term system uh, in order to compile or to construct the simple organi uh, knowledge organization system framework. And I, I won't go deep into this because I'm sure you all of all of you know about this, about the preferred label, alternative labels, and hidden labels. Here we'll have to use, as I mentioned, quantitative uh, analysis to differentiate between the preferred labels and the synonyms. And uh, later we will try to map uh, our list with the external vocabularies, uh, in particularly with eagle in this instance. Though eagle vocabulary is not um, complete or is not considered the best one, but so far it is the one used by the digital epigraphic uh, community. Um, I want to say that um, we, during this project, uh, we faced lots of um, issues or challenges which I spoke about and uh, we are working with this and one of them is the compilation of these vocabularies. The second, the ad adaptation of Epidoc uh, guidelines and uh, linking uh, inscriptions with broader geographical and historical 
frameworks. And as this is the first project, it is, I, I think that it has a lot to be done about this project and in the future. Uh, but we have also some advances. Unfortunately, I want to say that the war in Ukraine has presented a grave danger to the country's cultural heritage, including Armenian epigraphic heritage in Ukraine as well. There have been found more than 600 inscriptions in that territory, and uh, numerous historical sites, churches, and cemeteries have been subjected to shelling, risking irreparable damage. And moreover, the conflict has rendered many regions, including theirs, ho those housing Armenian inscriptions, inaccessible due to the ongoing war. So this um, unfortunate situation further underscores the urgent need for uh, concerted efforts to safeguard and preserve the endangered cultural heritage in Ukraine as well. And now we are planning to apply uh, for a new grant to go on trying to save this historical heritage in Ukraine as well. And I want to, so as a follow-up, um, uh, we are working on the first digitized database of Armenian and epigraphy, and these are the first stages. And moreover, this helped to um, uh, lay the foundation for digital humanities and digital epigraphy in Armenia. And they are eager to start a collaboration, and then now they are working on establishing a PhD program for a digital epigraphy there, which is really a step forward for them. Thank you for your attention.